Hey guys, my apologies for the delay. We'll get to as many things as we can before we have to break for the President's event. Good afternoon. As you know, the World Economic Forum will take place in Davos, Switzerland from January 22nd through 25th. The President will attend as he did last year. Secretary of the Treasury Steven Mnuchin will lead the delegation. That will also include Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Secretary of Commerce Wilbur Ross, Secretary of Labor Alex Acosta, Secretary of Transportation Elaine Chao, Secretary of Homeland Security Kirsten Nielsen, U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer, Small Business Administra Administrator Linda McMahon, Advisor to the President Ivanka Trump, Senior Advisor to the President Jared Kushner, and Deputy Chief of Staff for Policy Coordination Chris Liddell. On another note, the President is once again fulfilling a promise he made to the American people, and this morning the Acting Attorney General signed the final rule making clear that bump stocks are illegal because they fall within the definition of machine guns that are banned under federal firearms law. A 90-day period now begins which persons in possessions of bump stock type devices must turn those devices to an ATF field office or destroy them by March 21st. Instructions for proper destruction will be posted on ATF's website today. Lastly, Representative Martha McSally has been appointed to the U.S. Senate, and we congratulate her. She has been a strong partner in the House of Representatives, helping advance a number of the administration's priorities, including rebuilding our military and increased border security. The President applauds Governor Ducey for his swift and qualified selection, and he appreciates Senator John Kyle and thanks him for his service to the people of Arizona. And with that, I'll take your questions. John. Sir, a reaction to the delay in the Flynn sentencing and, and the rather unusual inquiry from Judge Sullivan this morning asking prosecutors if Flynn possibly committed treason? Uh, the delay is something between General Flynn and the courts, uh, and that's something for them to determine what that timeline looks like. In the meantime, we wish General Flynn well, and we'll continue to focus on uh, doing what we do here every single day. What about, the what about the inquiry as to whether he committed treason? Would, does the President see any reason why Flynn should be asked if he committed treason? Uh, I'm not aware of anything that we would know of that would indicate that. Certainly. Senator, I was in the courthouse at the courthouse last hour when the, the Judge Emmett Sullivan basically said that he was disgusted by Michael Flynn's crimes. He said that uh, he had disdain for Flynn. Uh, Flynn said that he knew that it was illegal to lie to the FBI and he was ready to accept responsibility. This was all before agreeing to a delay in sentencing. Given that, are you in a position now or would you like to revisit your comments earlier today that uh, the FBI ambushed Flynn here? No. Um, I, we still firmly believe, look, the things that may have taken place, again, that's for the judge to make that determination uh, whether he engaged in something inappropriate. What we do know that was inappropriate by own self-admittance of James Comey is that the FBI broke standard protocol in the way that they came in and ambushed General Flynn and in the way that they questioned him and in the way that they encouraged him not to have White House Counsel's office present. And we know that because James Comey told us that and he said that the very reason that they did it was because the only reason that they did it, it was the Trump administration and they thought they could get away with it. Uh, those are facts and certainly um, there may be other issues there, but that we don't uh, have any reason to want to walk that back. Senator. Very quickly about sure. uh, Michael Flynn. Um, he has cooperated with the special counsel's office and met with them 19 times. Is there a particular reason why the president has not said that he is a rat the way that he has said that Michael Cohen is a rat for cooperating with Russell? Look, we know Michael Cohen to uh, be a liar on a number of fronts, and um, the president's opinion is extremely clear on that front. I don't see any reason to uh, go beyond that comment at this point. Thanks, Sarah. Sarah. Two questions for you on the government shutdown. First, can you clarify us the current White House position towards the continuing resolution that's floating up on the Hill? Is it a demand for $1.6 billion in border wall funding, or is it supporting a continuing resolution to take this matter up after the after the Christmas break? You know, at this point, the Senate's thrown out a lot of ideas. Uh, we're disappointed in the fact that they've yet to actually vote on something and pass something. So when they do that, we'll make a determination on whether or not we're going to sign that. In the meantime, we're looking at every avenue available to us possible. The President's asked every one of his Cabinet Secretaries to look for funding that can be used uh, to protect our borders and for the 
give the president the ability to fulfill his constitutional obligation to protect the American people by having a secure border. So we're looking at the other options. In the meantime, we'll see what the Senate does, and we'll let you know when we have an announcement on that front. Uh, Second question. I'm going to, sorry, Sarah, I'm going to keep moving just because we're tied on time. Go ahead. So sir. following up on that, there's other sources that could potentially pay for the wall. Which agencies are you looking at? You've mentioned DOD. As I said, we're looking at, we've, the president's asked every uh, agency to look and see if they have money that can be used for that purpose, and, and if, that's exactly what we're doing. And if they can find that money, does that mean the president would accept um, a budget a proposal that does not include any money to fund new border wall construction? Once again, we want to see what the Senate can pass. Uh, they've thrown out a lot of ideas. They've yet to take a vote. Once they do that, we're, we're disappointed in the process and their uh, inability to put something forward. Once they make a decision and they put something on the table, we'll make a determination on whether or not we'll move forward on either a short-term or long-term yeah. yeah. Sorry, John, to keep moving. Josh, go ahead. Uh, Michael Flynn today tweeted that he did lie to the FBI and to them repeatedly and that he was working for foreign government uh, during the campaign. Does that concern the president? I mean, he seems to be concerned that Michael Cohen is a liar. Does he concern that... One of his top aides lied to the FBI and was working for a foreign government? Uh, not when it comes to things that have anything to do with the president. Uh, the activities that he has said to, and I'll, again, we'll let the court make that determination, to have engaged in don't have anything to do with the president. Let's remember what uh, the whole thing that this started is supposed to be about. It's whether or not Russia influenced the election and whether or not the president had anything to do with it. We know that the that Russia tried to create chaos within the election, but certainly not that they actually impacted it. The only reason that the president is the president is because he was a better candidate and beat Hillary Clinton. We also know that the president never colluded with Russia. So that's the whole reason that we have this, and we know those things to be false. Is, is the president concerned that Michael Flynn lied to representative of his own government and was working for another government during the campaign? Does that, is that concern him or not? Look, there's certainly concern, but that's something for the court to make that determination, and we'll let them do that. Positive comments about him when he's pleaded to this. Uh, again, we're going to let the court play that out, and they'll make a determination on whether or not he engaged in something well, right why or wrong. Is the president making positive comments about him, given these things that he's pled guilty to? It's perfectly acceptable for the president to make a positive comment about somebody while we wait to see what the court's determination is. Like, Sarah, Sarah, let me ask you about a tweet that the president sent out earlier today as he continues to vent frustration about the Federal Reserve. He said that uh, he hopes the Fed reads the Wall Street Journal op-ed. A part of the op-ed, the journal points out that U.S. growth might be slowing, the president's tariff battles have reduced investment, housing and autos are down, and there's a few cracks showing as well in the credit markets. When the president talks about the Fed, is he just venting at this point, or is he genuinely worried that if there is a rate hike tomorrow, that the economy will slow down? Uh, the president is stating his opinion, uh, which he is perfectly within his right to do so. I think that is one of the reasons people like him, is because he does that, and he does it regularly. Um, he's been very clear about what his position is, while at the same time he understands that the Fed is an independent agency. That doesn't take away the president's right to state his opinion on a particular matter. And let me ask you as it relates Sorry, to the show. Sorry, Francesca, go ahead. All right, thank you, Sarah. I, I just want to clarify one thing and then move back on to the border wall. Uh, but the clarification on Michael Flynn, you said it has nothing to do with the president, but one of the things that the judge brought up today was that it was so concerning to him because Michael Flynn lied inside the White House as the national security advisor to the president. So is the White House disputing at this point that Michael Flynn is a liar? Because that's also the reason that he was fired. He was we're fired for lying. We're disputing that any actions he engaged in had nothing to do with the president, that just because it, maybe he did do those things, but that doesn't have anything to do with the president directly. The president. Okay, when it comes to when it comes to the border wall I mean, today, today on television, right. you mentioned that the president would be willing to accept 1.6 billion dollars for the wall, the way that I understood it when you said it, and also that plays into a broader 25 billion dollar uh, bill over 10 years. Is that what the White House's current offer is to Capitol Hill that it would accept? Uh, again, we are continuing to have constant and regular conversations with the Hill. I'm not going to negotiate here. We've laid out clearly what our parameters are with members of Congress. We want to know what they can pass. We want to know uh, what they think they can actually get done. We've laid out what we'd like to see. Um, in the meantime, we're looking at other areas where we can draw money from to make sure that the president can actually
actually protect our border and protect American citizens. With, with the deficit ballooning to over a trillion dollars under this president, where are the additional monies for this wall going to come from, and why is he asking the American taxpayer for them? What he promised Mexico was going to Look, we're not asking American taxpayers for that. Uh, we are looking at existing funding through other agencies right now that we can draw on to do that in immediate, uh, immediately. So the president's been the clear. Deficit. The president has been clear that the USMCA deal would provide additional revenue through that deal that would show that Mexico is paying for the wall. The Treasury, though, the, the, the trade benefits, if there are any, don't, don't go to the Treasury. He's saying that the revenue provided and the money that would be saved through the USMCA deal, we could pay for the wall four times over. And by doing that new trade deal, we have the opportunity to pay for the wall. But trade benefits go to private citizens. Well, they don't go to the United States Treasury. About, he's talking about the general revenue that comes from that. So you're going to tax. No, we're not taxing. We're talking about additional revenue that wouldn't have existed without the president getting a new deal. Have you done the math on that? that, that, that there, are, there have been a number of things that we've looked at in which we know we'll have additional revenue that comes in through the USMCA. From the USMCA we think into we'll the have, Treasury? We think there will be more than that that comes in. Jeff, go ahead. Uh, Sarah, the, it was announced today that the president's charity is being dissolved. Does the president or anyone in his family have regrets about how that charity was handled? Uh, that's something that I would refer you to the Trump Organization. Organization. That's not something we could comment on here. Yeah, another question, yeah. another topic. Sorry, can you just, can you just clarify, ahead. Sarah, um, real yeah. quick on something okay. else, whether the president has given any indications to Turkey that he would be willing to extradite the, the cleric who won? Uh, the only thing he said is that we would take a look at it. Nothing further at this point you beyond that. Look at take a look at it, but nothing uh, committal at all in that process, just that he would look into it. Yeah. Yeah. You've been saying a lot that things don't have anything to do with the president, and he's just giving his opinion, and he has a right to give his opinion. But does he not have a broader right, I mean, uh, responsibility as far as, you know, if, if his national security advisor is lying, it, are, should he not be speaking on behalf of the American people, not just himself, President Trump, man under investigation, but, you know, in, in all these uh, aspects, you're talking about saying that he is just speaking for himself and he's not been uh, linked uh, to collusion is the claim, and therefore, he, you know, it doesn't matter what he says. And the same thing with That's the not Fed, what I said at all. that his uh, comments on the Fed have no bearing, he's just giving his opinion. What about him I didn't speaking say they have for the no American bearing. people? I said he's, a, the, he's the President of the United States and he should. Not only uh, does he have the ability to give his opinion, he should give his opinion. That's why the people elected him, is because they trusted him to make decisions on policy matters. They want to know what his positions are on specific policies. He absolutely should state his opinion on uh, not just that, but on every topic that comes up that he wants to engage on. But a lot of people who are uh, somehow involved in investigations feel the FBI is unfairly targeting them, but the president normally has a different role we as far as... We know for a fact that the FBI FBI engaged in an outrageous amount of political bias. The fact that anybody could deny that there was political bias within the FBI, particularly under James Comey's leadership, is frankly just laughable. I guess I'm wondering, using terms like rat and things like that to talk about people who are cooperating witnesses with the FBI, or people does he not who are have dishonest a, and he, lying. Does I mean, he not have a broader seems responsibility like a to, to preserve confidence in the rule of law for, for the American people? Certainly, and that's why he has appointed new people uh, to help do exactly that, whether it's Director Ray, uh, a, a new Attorney General, somebody that can come in uh, and be very transparent throughout this process. We'll take one last question. Yeah. Justin, the President's about to kick off. Sure. I just wanted to go back to uh, the shutdown. And you keep saying that you've asked agencies to look for more money. And so on this issue of reprogramming specifically, is your red line in these negotiations that you need Congress to reprogram money explicitly? So. DHS or the Defense Department or whoever it might be say, the Congress say, you can spend this money that we didn't spend on something else on wall construction? Or no. are you saying that you think that you have the legal authority? And what are you, I guess, basing that legal authority on since uh, Nancy Pelosi said today that, in fact, that, that sort of authority doesn't I, exist? I would never use Nancy Pelosi as my source for legal authority on probably anything, but I would use attorneys that work here at the White House and in agencies that... Uh, that's their entire job is determining whether or not something is legal, and we're looking to those individuals to find out so, uh, those so specific pots of money that can bonus, be used for that. A bonus amount of money that is sort of reprogrammed by Congress won't be necessary for the president's signature on uh, on this budget bill. We, again, we would like to see 
uh, Congress pass an appropriations bill that fully funds our government and that allows the president to protect our border and provides substantial border security funding, um, both for the wall, for CBP, for ICE, all of DHS. Uh, but in the meantime, we're also looking at other avenues that would allow us to provide um, and do our constitutional authority and the president to be able to carry that out by protecting our border and protecting American citizens. I'd encourage you guys to tune in to the president's event. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys.